Today we're gonna to be discussing a topic called dynamic range. What dynamic range is and how you can use it effectively to make your mixes have more punch and clarity and how you can also destroy your mixes dynamic range. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, today we're talking about dynamic range. Dynamic range is one of those things that can get often overlooked by beginners in the music production space. You might be asking yourself, what is dynamic range and why should I care? Well, dynamic range is the difference between the quietest parts and the loudest parts of a song. As you see here in this Pro Tools session, I've got this basic drum loop from Splice, and you can see the loudest points obviously are where these transients are, and the quietest points are where you practically have almost nothing. And so that could be complete silence, which then is called the noise floor. And there's a lot to be said about understanding what dynamic range is because dynamic range can be controlled with tools like compressors, limiters, and clippers. So let's get into some more specifics about dynamic range real quick. One thing you should remember is that audio systems that play back music have dynamic range as well. So for example, when you get down to the noise floor, you hear the noise of the system that is reproducing the music. And then on the other end of the spectrum, the top end of the dynamic range is where the system distorts. So that's something to pay attention to because if you have too much amplification and the system distorts, that's a problem. The same goes when mastering music. If you start trying to get so much loudness, or if you're just mixing and you're throwing a limiter on your mix bus to get loudness and listen to what it sounds like, you could be destroying your dynamic range. And I'm gonna show you some examples of what this could look like. Before we begin, dynamic range is important in music. And I did a series on dynamic range way back when I started this channel. So I'll leave you a link to that playlist, but we're gonna give you a different perspective on dynamic range today. Dynamic range is vital for having contrasting moments in music between the loudest parts of the song and the quietest parts of the song. So if we were to take an orchestra, for example, and you had this huge string section, they might get really loud and then go into this soft, quiet, nice passage. And those dynamics create that tension and release. The same goes for, say, a rock song or an EDM or dance music song, like a house music song. You know, you have the loudest parts of the song when the beat is driving. And then you have quiet parts where there's breakdowns or passages like bridges that may, you know, have those dynamic changes. And that provides the tension and release. So dynamics and tension and release are definitely linked in that, in that mindset where you need dynamics to give the listener that push and pull feeling. If everything was loud all the time, then there's gonna be no contrast from what you're doing. For example, if you have the song and the loudest part of the song is verse one, then where can you go after that? You can't go to a chorus, which is supposed to be louder than the verse because you've already hit the loudest part of the song. So when crafting your mixes, you need to be thinking of dynamics because this is where automation can come into play and using cool things and tricks like filter automation or envelopes or fades or volume automation just to give your song more dynamics and create these passages in your arrangement that allow for things to change. Another thing to consider about dynamics is signal to noise ratio. Although it is not the same thing as dynamic range, it plays a part. For example, if you're recording a vocalist or an instrumentalist and you don't have enough gain on your mic pre, all of a sudden your signal to noise ratio is extremely low. And that means when you bring up the music later, the noise floor is gonna get brought up with it. So you need to record with a nominal level, which goes back to gain staging, and I have a video on that. I'll leave you a link down below. Check that out because all of this applies and all of these core principles are essential knowledge when trying to produce music. It's only gonna make you that much better when you're moving around from DAW to DAW, plug in to plug in, and how you craft your mixes. I want to share this website called the dr.loudnesswar.info 
And if you're not familiar with the loudness wars, back when CDs were made, there was this constant battle to get things as loud as possible. And unfortunately, what happened was a lot of the stuff got re a lot of music got remastered with less dynamics. And, you know, in some genres, that might be a thing. I have to master a lot of music very hot for clients of mine that make house music. They want it loud. They got to compete with things on the dance floor. They got to compete with the charts on Beatport and track source. I get that. But there's a way to master and not destroy your dynamics. I find a lot of people are trying to master their own stuff and just literally just crushing the hell out of their music. And it sounds like shit, no offense. This website here will show you the dynamics of very popular songs and give it a DR rating of the dynamic range overall, the minimum dynamic range and the maximum dynamic range. And you could search for songs that you like and just kind of get an idea of where some of the music that you like sits. And this is a cool website to check out because it does show dynamics over time. If you were to sort things by year and go all the way back, obviously there's some here that just have year zero. You can see dynamics were more in the green than if you were to go the other way around. As you see here, we have a lot more red. Um, so it's very interesting to note because over time, the dynamics and the loudness wars have been a very big part of the music industry. But in today's world of streaming, dynamics are more of a thing because the level is controlled. So you have less control of how your music is interpreted to the listener unless they turn off that option in say their Spotify or the streaming platform if it allows them to. I believe most do. I don't have all the streaming platforms. For example, I don't use Deezer, but you know, Spotify has a switch that allows you to listen to the music as it was intended to, or with normalization, which therefore it will auto adjust the volume of a song. And if you go back to my dynamic range videos and understand what that means, that means you might be getting turned down. So, Getting back to dynamics, let's understand what dynamics really mean. I'm going to just play you this loop and we're going to bust this over to our aux track and I want to slam it. I want you to see what this thing is doing. Actually, we don't need to make any makeup. We'll leave that alone. So you see how I'm affecting the dynamics here of this signal. As you can see, the louder parts have been turned down and it's more even in volume. Let's do that again with a faster release and we can then gain this up. Now you see that the transients are letting go a little sooner but, and we're getting a little bit more of an even volume. Now, if I were to shorten the attack and make the release longer, let's make the release the longest and even do more compression. We got 12 decibels of gain reduction happening here. And look at that, we've taken this transient and almost made it as loud as that hi-hat. Let's see what it sounds like now. And it sounds very stale. versus this. You lost all that punch. Once again, let's go back to this one. It made the kick sound very papery. So that's an example of overusing compression and destroying your dynamics. Let's get into limiting. Okay, let's give you another example with a limiter now. Here, we've got a scenario where we are smashing it. Look at that. I could turn this down, and the more I just crush these transients, the more I turn this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and record this. And now what you see is you see that these peaks have been chopped off, and I'm actually getting a louder signal, so I'm basically making this look like 
instead of what the compression did, I'm actually flattening out my sound here. Let's mute this. And I'm gonna turn this over to the... So there's the limiter. So you lose, although it's louder, it doesn't sound as good. Let's lower this to level match. Let me see. Sorry about that. Let's do this again. That's close. The kick sounds thumpy, papery. It lost the punch. It's it's blown up, it's distorted, it's and I'm turning it down. So although it may sound good to you louder, you've therefore destroyed your sound in turn destroying your dynamics. And gotta be careful with that. Gotta be careful with that. A good way to approach this would be to use a clipping tool. Okay, this is the Oxford inflator. Let me get this routed. We're gonna go to clipping and we're gonna turn this on. And we're gonna put this here. And we're gonna send this to clipping. We're gonna send this to aux. All right, so what this does is it basically takes your transients and just shaves them off. And although it does it in a more musical way because your brain can't really tell the difference and it's, it is destroying the audio in some sense, but let's compare. Here's before. Wait, oops, there we go. So I'm gonna send this, sorry, there's a little bit of the clipping there. I'm gonna just turn this up 100%. So now what we see here is the clipper was able to get us a similar waveform to the limiter, but not as bad in a more musical way. It just clipped off some of these top transients and was able to get things louder. So this is a great way to actually get some more loudness out of your mix is to use a clipper. And if you're interested to understand more about clippers, I can make a full video. Just drop me a comment down below. But I hope this video kind of helps you understand a little bit about dynamics because you can ruin your mix if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff. And this is a brief explanation and synopsis of dynamic range, but you could talk about this subject for days. So I hope this helps you out. And if you need help with your mastering and making your stuff loud without crushing your dynamics, check out my free sample link down below. I offer first time clients one free stereo mastered sample. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video on dynamic range. If you have any questions, be sure to shoot me a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. And if you need help with your mastering, be sure to check the link below for a free stereo mastered sample. Thank you again and have a good day.